Alrighty, welcome to lesson number 13 of the Databases and SQL video tutorial series. This is lesson number 13 of the one-to-one -one relationship talk. So here's what you're going to learn in this lesson. This lesson uh, is all about real-world examples of the one-to-one -one relationships that we can have in our databases, what the actual one-to-one -one relationship looks like in a database, and how to identify the parent and child tables in a one-to-one -one relationship. Now here it's a bit more tricky because in the one-to-many it was quite obvious the distinction between the parent and the child, whereas with the one-to-one -one, there's a bit more thinking that's involved. So that's exactly what you're going to be learning about today. So I'm going to go ahead and stress this point again that the whole point of establishing relationships between tables is to avoid database anomalies by following the rules of normalization. Okay, that's the whole point, that's the big picture that we're getting at here with these uh, breaking the tables apart and creating relationships. And also, I'll mention again that a database is considered to be normalized when it is in at least third normal form. Okay, you can be in third normal form or you can be higher in the BCNF, the Boyce and Cod, or Boyce Cod normal form, but uh, like I said, I'm not teaching anything about the voice COD because it's quite a a very uh, specific situation that you'll need to be in um, if you're hitting uh, you know this one you know situation where you could get anomalies. But like I said, by all means, go out and once you get a hang of this stuff, uh, check out the voice COD normal form uh, to get a good idea of what that specific scenario is, and you'll probably see that you'll never hit it yourself. So that's why I'm not including it in this particular uh, teaching tutorial. So. In any case, to achieve this normal form, the third normal form, um, you'll likely need to break your bigger tables into smaller ones and establish relationships between them. And obviously the best practice kinds of relationships it, that you can create are the three that I mentioned before, which is the one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. Having said that, let's dive right back into the one-to-one -one relationship stuff. Uh, now, th this relationship is a little bit less common than the one-to-many relationship, but it's obviously still useful to learn. So here's some examples of a one-to-one -one relationship. Person to driver's license, person to mailing address, school to principal. So think about this. If you are a person and you have a driver's license, you most likely will only have one driver's license because in North America, you are not allowed to hold more than one physical driver's license. Okay, if you had two or more, that would probably be some sort of a fraudulent situation. So in a, a nice legal abiding uh, citizen type situation in North America, one person is assigned one driver's license, one to one relationship. Also, typically when you go into addresses, we had talked about one to many before where one person can have many addresses, but typically one per or one person only has one mailing address. Okay, you might have a mailing address and a billing address and a whatever address, but typically one person has one mailing address. So that's a good representation of the one to one relationship. Also, school to principal. Typically speaking, in a normal North American society type situation, uh, a one school only has one principal. They might have many vice principals to help out, but one school typically has one principal. Okay, one to one. You see what I'm getting at here? So the key thing to note here is how the relationship actually functions. One person is related to one driver's license, and any driver's license can only be tracked back to one person. It's called one-to-one -one because you can only have one record pointing to one other record. Hopefully I've hit that over, hit you over the head with that many times and enough times that you get it. So, how do we create this one-to-one -one relationship in a database setting? Like we looked at before with the one-to-many relationship, uh, we had a very specific way to set it up in the database through the database schema. This time we're going to look at how we can do it with a one-to-one. -one. So the first step is to obviously identify the two tables that are involved in this particular relationship. So in our example, let's use the person to driver's license relationship that I talked about previously. And uh, and here's what exactly what it would look like. So our person and our driver's license tables could look like this. So we'd have the person table with a person ID and a person name. Then we have the driver's license table with a person ID and a driver's license number. Now I'll get into exactly why this fits the bill for one-to-one -one relationship in the next slide. So the important thing um, that we need to do here is to understand what the heck is going on. So like I said before, with the one-to-many relationship, I had said that the, the, the driver's license, or rather the, um, what's the child table, will hold not only its own um, primary key ID, but it will also hold a foreign key ID. 
but you can see here that that's not the case for this situ uh, situation. The driver's license table does not have its own driver's license ID. You see that? There's no driver's license ID here. So the primary key of the table is the same as the foreign key of the table, which is person ID. This guarantees a one-to-one -one relationship because since the, the uh, primary key of the table is the person ID, that mean, and it's also the foreign key, that means you will never be able to have a duplicate uh, situation where you have another person pointing back, or sorry, another um, driver's license that points back to uh, a different person. So you would never have a situation where one person has many driver's licenses or a situation where you have uh, many people with many driver's license and many driver's license pointing back to many people. It just cannot happen when you have this particular setup, okay? So the next important thing that we need to do here when creating this relationship is to identify which table represents the parent and which table represents the child side of the relationship, okay? So we can't, th this is the way that I do it, and this is the way that you should do it when you're trying to decide which is which. So in this case, we can have a person, a person can exist without a driver's license. Whereas conversely, we cannot have a driver's license that exists without a person. You see what's happening there? So knowing this and understanding this, we can establish the concept of a parent and child. The person table is the parent and the driver's license is the, ta is the child table. This is universally true with all one-to-one -one relationships. So this is the question you need to ask yourself. Can I have one table that can exist without the other? So since the person can exist without the other table, the driver's license table, that means the person is the parent side of the relationship. But since the driver's license um, cannot exist on its own and that it needs, it's, 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 um, it's dependent on the parent, it's dependent on the person, that means that the driver's license table is the child side of the relationship. So knowing this, you can figure out uh, how we can move forward from here. So also, like I said, I want to reiterate the fact with the foreign key use here. The child side of the, of the relationship always holds the foreign key of the parent in place of the child's primary key. So this point is just reiterating what I've said before. Since we've established the child side of the, of the relationship as being the driver's license, because the driver's license cannot exist without the parent table, which is the person table, the child side of the, the relationship always holds the foreign key. So this is the person ID, which is the foreign key, but it's also holding it in place of its own primary key. So you may have expected the child table, like I said, to have a driver's license ID, but that would actually um, violate the integrity of our relationship because that would then be a one-to-many situation. So if we had a driver's license ID column here, if we had uh, outlined it as a primary key, that would be the one-to-many relationship. If you think back to the last lesson, that's exactly how we um, created our employer and employee tables. This, If the, the employee table was a child table, it was the many side of the one-to-many relationship and the employee table had an employee ID as well as the employer ID okay this would have been the exact same situation if we had put a driver's license ID in this table if we had driver's license ID as well as a person ID that would have been a one-to-many situation but because we do not have a driver's license ID and the primary key is the same thing as the foreign key in the child table that now means that we have created a one-to-one relationship. Now I just realized this uh, title is incorrect. I have one to many here in the title. I need to change this to say one to one because obviously that's what we're talking about here. So like I said, since the primary key of the child table is a foreign key, this guarantees a one to one relationship because think about it. If we had, let's say person ID one with person name, let's say Trevor Page, and then we have a driver's license and we have a driver's license number, we can only assign it to one person. So we'd have to say, okay, well, person ID would then be one. And that's it. So we have a driver's license number and a person ID being one. And that maps back to one person, which is Trevor Page. And then if we were to put a second person in, like a John Doe as person ID two, we would have to put in another, another driver's license number. And we would have to give it a person ID, which would, let's say, be two. So there's no way to have... Um, any one driver's license mapping back to multiple people or vice versa. That's the beauty of this schema. That's the beauty of the, the layout of this particular database design. Okay. This is the universal format for all one-to-one -one relationships in all databases. Cool. 
So what have we learned? We just learned that, uh, or rather we covered some real world examples of one-to-one relationships, person to driver's license, person to mailing address, school to principal. Uh, we, we talked about what a one-to-one relationship looks like in a database where the foreign key of the parent table exists in a child table as the primary key of the child table. So in place of what you would have created in the child table, um, instead of its own primary key, you give it uh, the primary key being the foreign key of the parent table. Um, And obviously we learned how to identify the parent and child uh, tables in a one-to-one relationship. So a quick way to sum it up is to say the parent is a table that can exist without the child, and the child is a table that cannot exist without the parent. Does that make sense? Cool. So let's move on to the next lesson, which is the final uh, type of relationship that you can create, which is going to be the many-to-many relationship. So let's take a look at that now.